Authors Tell All, a podcast by Shy Soul. She's bringing you author interviews, book discussions, and more. Stay tuned.
Hello, 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 everyone. I hope you guys are having a great night. We are live. I'm your host, Shai Soul, and we are here with author L. Lauren, aka Lisa Letting. How are you? I'm great. How are you? I'm doing fine on this marvelous night. So we're going to get into interview questions. We're going to get into book discussions of her book, Untangled. And we're going to be talking about a little bit of some October festivities. We're gonna get into that later in the segment, but first we're gonna start off with the author interview questions. So, for the startup, I want to know, and I want your viewers to know, your listeners, what made you want to become an author? We're gonna start off with that. I've always loved reading um, since I was a little girl and learned how to read. And I've, I found myself immersed in the stories and you know, for hours I would lose myself. I would go to the library and sit and read like a little nerd. And, mm-hmm. Yeah, that that sparked my love of stories. And then I wanted to write, but and I always did, but I never showed anybody my work until I became an adult. Mm-hmm. And once I was in my forties, I decided that it was time to stop hiding and to let everybody else see what I have been writing. I love that. I love that. So, what made you want to go into the genre that you're in now? I actually um, had never read any romance books at all Mm -hmm. until one day I was scrolling through my timeline on Facebook and one of my friends recommended I read a book by Twyla Turner. And it was her Scarred series. And I read book one, I couldn't get enough of it, so I had to read the whole series, which is three books. And from that point, I was like, you know what, I need to write this kind of book, because I'm a romantic at heart, I love reading about people falling in love, it just sparked something within me, and I decided, this is what I'm going to write. So, I discussed it with my husband, and he didn't have an issue with it, so, hey, I started writing I love that because I am a hopeless romantic myself. I love me a good romance novel, series, all of the above. I absolutely love that. That's the type of books that I grew up on, you know, the teenage love and then to young adulthood. So that is my forte too. I absolutely love that. Now, as for urban, how did you want to go and put it in that sense with romance novels and well, I actually don't write specifically urban. I write mm-hmm. interracial romance. Mm-hmm. Um, so, but I, I'm a black woman, so I write from my own perspective. I, I feel that there needs to be a more of a voice of black women and falling in love and not just having to go through a bunch of um, turmoil or even if they did go through turmoil, everybody deserves love. So. Mm-hmm. I wanted to show that in my books um, from a perspective of a black woman. And I know I'm not the only one, but I feel like there needs to be more voices out there. Yes, I say that on my show all the time. Especially with a book, you can do so much and you can speak volumes with your book. So, you know, you can do so many different characters and races. So I love, I really love that the fact that you're 
doing the interracial because i mean i love those stories too and you guys you already know i read every author's book that comes on the show so i have read i'm not even done with the whole series yet of untangled i'm not even the book night i'm not even done with the entire series that's the crazy part and i just i'm so in love with how she wrote it and how she went about that and we will get into that but we won't be spoiling anything for anyone who hasn't read it yet so what made you start with this series this series was um by one of my friends Simon allen she developed it and she decided that she wanted to take a turn on the dark side of things mm-hmm. everybody always reads or uh, writes about the beautiful happy go lucky princess and prince falling in love and she wanted to take the disney stories and flip it and find out what made the villains tick. And I chose to go with um, one of my favorites, which is Unfold, which is the Tangled book, mm-hmm. the story of Rapunzel. And, and my book, Goo Goo, is the representation of Mother Gothel. And so I took her and turned her into a black woman and gave her um, issues that a black woman would go through and made her a villain and wanted to find out how she fell in love what happened to her in her past to make her so angry and mean and she actually was very I wouldn't say narcissistic but she was very um, obsessed with beauty and mm-hmm. that's because she was bullied you know what that really reminded me of was Maleficent that definitely her book really reminded me of that I was like she really? was, yes she, like I'm like I don't know how but you really really hit it on the mark i'm like this reminds me of something i'm like i don't know if she's seen the movie yet or if she knows about like did she base it off that character but it really like matched and i was like this is just like the black version of you know maleficent but in a very fancy and just our urban touch way and i really really love that that's why I was like, that's why I really want to actually like, have you seen that movie? Like, did that inspire it? Because it, I really felt like, you know. <laughs> no, I didn't. Um, I didn't see those people left. You know, that's the mother gothel, but that's good, though. Because you couldn't tell which one it was. Exactly. <laughs> wow, that's shocking. That I really love that. Hmm. That's surprising, guys. I really did think that. She, like, you know, was like, let me, like, you know, really look into the that's really like on the head like you could have really been a writer for that that's how well it almost matched (laughs) (laughs) um so do you plan on having any more books to this series or like you're completely done yes um next year we're doing another round of once upon a villain series and i will be writing another story in that Mm -hmm. um I believe I'm gonna do the Cyclops character from Greek mythology. So. Oh, I already love it. Just tag. I absolutely love Greek mythology. That's that's my that's my absolute favorite. My absolute favorite. So I know you're gonna you're gonna do really really well with that. Um. So my next question is: With writing all those awesome books, does writing energize you or does it exhaust you? It energizes gives me purpose um my brain is always busy Mm -hmm. thinking of a new story what's next what can i do next and i dream my most of my stories come from my dreams so i wake up and i'll write stuff down or i have to tell my husband guess what i had a dream about last night and i'll start telling him the entire outline of the story pretty much and he's looking at me like, okay, <laughs> you need to write it down. That is, that's very true because I'm like that in a sense. My mind is always running. Plus, I'm an artist, so that's another factor in it too. So, I'm always having ideas about books and then I'm always having ideas about artwork that I want to do next. So, you know, my mind is always moving in different ways as well. For me, I could be up writing all night and I won't get exhausted at all. I don't know how but like my brain doesn't stop at all so i completely understand you on that part (laughs) definitely um so what do you think are the common traps 
for aspiring authors who, you know, they see us and they want to be like, you know, I don't know how to get into it, but I really want to write a book. What is the type of traps that can really get them and, you know, kind of can mess up the way they want to write, you know? Well, I wouldn't say a trap. Mm -hmm. I try to focus on the positive side of things, but what something that they should watch out for um, is following trends and not staying true to what they want to write. Mm -hmm. So I wouldn't, you know, change myself too much. I mean, sometimes you have to because it is a business and you have to, you know, fold to certain things like maybe book cover designs or something like that. But I would stay true to who you are as a writer and not try to change yourself to follow the trend because trends die out and they change. But if you have a style, you have a writing style, that's not going to change and that's going to solidify who you are as far as longevity because you want to make a career out of it. You want to be able to go back 10 years from now and still write the book instead of saying, what was I thinking? Right. I like that. I like that. I try to get some new authors to understand that and they just really be really thinking that you know following trends and all that stuff is really what makes them a good writer we can really get them on the charts and everything honestly to me it's not really trying to top the charts but it's just getting what you wrote out to your readers you know the people who really want to read your work and believe in you and want to support it so that's the main thing that I really want new authors to understand that I don't follow trends at all I hate them <laughs> I really like to be outside the box and be different you know that captures new eyes like they don't want to some people don't want to keep reading the same things over and over again that's why I brought that up because your series is so different and she's very original you're very very original I might add that because in my mind as many fairy tales and all that that I have watched and read I would have never thought to do what you did, put a different spin on it, and turn to a whole series. You know, I wouldn't have never thought about that. And I have a lot of creativity work going on in this cranium of mine. So I really, really appreciate that. She's a really great author, you guys. And I'm not just saying that. Well, thank you. Yeah. And again, I don't want to take credit for the series because that was um, Siren Allen, mm -hmm. her brainchild on that. Well, she's wonderful as well. I'm gonna definitely gonna have to get her on the show because to create for her to branch an idea and you know want to partner up with somebody that's that's brave in itself, you know, to get that story out too. Um, so she really, I know she really be believed in your writing because she you can really write. Um, so what is your writing kryptonite? I love asking authors this question. And I will never divulge it. Because <laughs> I don't want anyone knowing my weaknesses. <laughs> <laughs> that is, see, thank you. That that deserves a, a, applause because it's like I, I get authors with this question all the time. And they, they answer and I'm like, you know, you're, they're not, you're supposed to say no. You know, that's just me. I will not put that out there. You know, I love that answer. Because that's something I would say, too. Because I have many, especially when I'm writing. I'll, I'll never give that away. Cause... And if it's a weakness, I am the type of person that will conquer it. I'm going to work on it until I conquer it. And then it won't be my weakness anymore. So <laughs> Exactly. I love that answer. That was perfect. <laughs> that was absolutely perfect. Okay, so now for our segment, you know, it's October. I'm going to be having a lot of authors on the show for this last week of October, and I want to go out with the, a nice bang. So, basically, her books are kind of in that paranormal sense, fantasy, you know, all that great stuff. So, a few topics for tonight is I want to ask you a little bit about... Do you believe in tarot card readings or anything like that? I have never had my, a tarot card reading. Mm -hmm. I have um, other friends that they love it. They are really into it. They study the craft of it. Mm -hmm. But I've, I've never had a desire to actually get a reading. I think it's fun, 
but I would bank my life on it, you know? Yeah. Now, I have asked my mom a few questions, and I'm like, Mom, have you ever... She's like, uh-uh. Don't you even ask me about that. I'm like, I'm like, what do you mean? I'm just asking questions. She was like, uh, no. And the reason I will never do any of that or go into it is because she gave me a whole story. And I'm like, so, Mom, you don't want to do it or you don't want to even tell me about it because you got, like, a chain letter or then they sent you some tarot cards. She was like, uh-uh. She said, I burned them. I threw them out. No, that was not coming in our house. I was like, oh, well, Okay. You know, I just wanted to ask for the segment, but fine. <laughs> so, guys, I will be having questions like that with other authors as well. So, um, so what about, do you believe in palm readings? Do you believe in anything like that? Do you know anybody who knows about that, too? So, yeah. Well, I mean, I, I'm associated with people. I'm from, like, North Carolina, so mm-hmm. that, that's yeah, around that area. Mm-hmm. But I was brought up to believe that it's just, it's not real. Yeah. So, and I don't want to offend anybody, so if someone believes in that, that's just the way I was brought up. You do what you want. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. Just like with the I story. I think it's for entertainment. Mm-hmm. It's for me. Mm-hmm. But some people actually believe in, they, they, you know, they will plan their life around it. That's not for me. I agree with what you're saying definitely agree with that um okay so what now this is this is the biggest question i've been waiting to ask and i'll be asking this question every day this week too what do you feel about if you watch horror movies that's if you do um but i know you know about our black stereotypes within those movies how do you feel about that now, this is going to be interesting okay well i do watch horror movies okay and I think it's hilarious that black people always die in the in the movies because I know that we wouldn't. The way we react mm-hmm. to these, we're gonna run away first. We're gonna fight you. We're gonna, we're not gonna do stupid stuff. Exactly. <laughs> we're not tripping and falling in the woods. We're not doing any of that. We're fighting. We're getting out of there. We're resilient. So I don't know where that stereotype where the black person dies is the first person to die in every movie. I don't understand where that came from. <laughs> yeah, me either. Because basically we are, like she said, we are the, the smartest people in the movie. We're not going to want to go and investigate like this is a Scooby-Doo or something. We're going to go search for the kill. No. Oh, no. We're going to go for the car keys and we're going to drive away. And you guys can do that, but we're not about to be a missing body on TV. I don't understand that. And it's with everything. That's why I... I know my few horror movies. I don't love it. I do hate it. I'm I'm a, I'm a scary cat with it, but still, it makes no sense to me. That's why I love black authors when they do paranormal. You don't see them killing us off so quickly. We the stars in our stuff. So yeah, and then there's the black horror movies. They don't, it's like they don't take it as serious as, you know, the right. other race does. They put, like, a little humor with it. Yeah, and always the comedy in there. <laughs> always the comedy. And then they always say, we're not going to be the first ones to, you know, be chopped up in the few seconds of the movie. Right. They showed that in the screen. That. Yeah. And, and you know what I love the humor part of it? It's because, like you said before, I'm a scared cat. So I get scared real easy. But if somebody can make me laugh, scared, oh, I like that. <laughs> yes, that is, that's, that's that's crazy. Um, So where do you think you're going to go with your books? Are you going to dive into maybe some other paranormal books maybe besides like, you know, fantasy and romance? You know, I don't limit myself. Mm-hmm. So when something piques my interest and I see it, I'm going to try it. And if I like writing it, I'm going to continue writing it. Like this paranormal for Google, I was like, I really went out there. She went to hell and everything. Mm-hmm. I was like, whoa. I didn't know she was going to do that. The characters just take a life of their own. So I don't limit myself with that. Mm-hmm. I would like to write about witches. I think that's something I want to do. I have a short story that I wrote 
where they had a coven, mm. and I might, you know, bring that back and make it a full, full length story. Do it. Do because it. Because I really enjoyed writing about the witches. Do it. I absolutely love black witches. I love I love stuff like that. I can't wait till I get done with my story. Now me, people are going to understand soon that I don't know if they caught on yet, but I am a what you call a dark writer. You know, I love a lot of drama. I'm put it in that sense. I I know how you like happy endings and all that. People just me, I'm the opposite. <laughs> I want you to see that she earned her happy ending or she didn't deserve it. So I'm not going to make her ultra perfect because in this world, everyone's not perfect. No one's perfect at all. You know, you can try to do that in a book. But to me, it's like I want to be as realistic as possible. So I will put my characters through hell and back. I will, I, I will do that. <laughs> Mm-hmm. Subscribe to that mm-hmm. is because when people read, it's called escapism. They don't want yeah. the reality. Yeah. They know what's going to happen in real life, and they're tired of it. So they want to go somewhere where they can not think about the bad things for a few hours a day. So that's why, and you know, like I said, I'm a hopeless romantic, and I think everybody deserves a happy ending. So. Mm-hmm. That's what I do. <laughs> yeah, now don't get me wrong. I will put, you know, a few happy aspects. Like, I will really do that. Now, I can write my butt off with a total romantic story. And I'm like, oh my God, that was, I loved it. I cried. But then the other half of me, when I do another series, oh, it's going to just be all the way out. It's going to be somebody's going to get killed. Somebody's going to fall in love. And then she might lose him. And then, you know, it's just that. So I go realistic to a certain point, you know, just drama within me. I can't escape that. <laughs> That's why my publisher is like, you know what? You can do whatever you want to do. Just go ahead and do it. I don't care. You can write your paranormal. You can write your urban. You can do your romance. I was like, yay. You know, I can have a whole field day with my books. But just the darkness. I don't know. It's just that's always been me with my stories. At first, you know, I tried to do just being solid and try to be in, like, one way. But I was like, no, that's not me. I like to put a lot of dimension and all of that with my characters. I want them... to that. Yeah. Because that's mm-hmm. what you're passionate about. Yep, and when I figured that out, I just changed everything. I know people say you're not supposed to delete your stories, you know. You're supposed to keep them. You can revamp them. No, I'm the type of person where... If I'm like, yeah, I don't like this, I'm going to delete it. I don't care how long it is. I still can't get myself up out of that. I write very long books, and I will delete 100 k worth of work and start all the way over. Yeah, I've done it before. And didn't feel bad about it. And just redid it, and then it felt fresh. I was like, yes, this is the way I wanted it to go. Okay. You know? And I can't get, my, I can't get myself out of that at all. I don't know why, but I just can't. I'm like that with my artwork, too. If it works for you, keep doing it. Like I said before, don't change what's essential about you. Because that's what makes you great. You see, guys? It makes you unique. You see, guys, this is why I could not wait to talk to her. Because she has things that you guys will want to know. Especially new authors. Because what she's saying is true. You don't just want to just be put into a box. You want to come out of the box. And, you know, do exactly what you want to write create the characters that you want to speak volumes and all of that because the way the route that I was going when I first started off I was like no it's not fun now it's fun (laughs) now I just come up with anything and I'm in love with it no matter how crazy it is Mm -hmm. you enjoy your writing you enjoy your artistry that's the best thing in the world instead of somebody dictating to you what to do and how to do it Exactly. Now, I want to know, would you ever want to turn any of your books, any of your books into a movie, a TV series, a YouTube series, anything like that? Have you ever thought about that? Yes, and yes. (laughs) That is one of my um, bucket list dreams. 
I definitely want to turn my first series that I wrote into a movie. I, I can see the actors. I have to pick out everything in my head. Now I got to get the budget for it. But um, and then I have an MC series that I would love to turn into a TV series. Mm-hmm. I could see that happening. Yeah, me too. Like if you're if you can see your stories turning into a movie, a series, or you can see it while you're writing it, just put that in one of your to-do lists. Don't ever defer from that because you don't know who will pick up the story or who will want to email you about a script or even writing a script if you know your work is that well. Because I keep putting it out in the atmosphere that one day I will work with someone or I will do it on my own, which I do want to do it on my own and create my own film. You know, that's always been me. As soon as I heard about Tyler Perry having his studios, I'm like, I'm going to get all my scripts together and send them to him almost every day. (laughs) I will. I said that to myself. I'm like, I am going to make at least one movie on his lot. That is something I'm going to say. I wrote it, wrote it down. They say, say your dream out loud. Write it down and then get to work. And that's what I'm doing. Exactly. Like, I have to shout my auntie out for this. She got me this cute notebook when she came into town. It's called My Big Ass (laughs) Journal. (laughs) And it has big ass ideas. (laughs) Big ass. It's it's so cute. Like, when you open it, it's no negative in it at all. It's all positivity. And she knows me so well. She said, I know you have a lot going on and you love journals. That's Now, that's my favorite journal. I don't know how she found it. I don't know where she got it from, but I love it. Come through, auntie. That's what we're for. I don't have any kids, but I got plenty of nieces and nephews. That's what we do. <laughs> exactly. And she she's my biggest fan. She get, She got every book that came out on the release day and everything. She tells all her co-workers about my books and everything i'm like that now that's she's my biggest fan i'm her biggest fan vice versa so yeah that support is real so how do you f- feel about family support because you know the things i'd be seeing on facebook and social media i'm like i know family can be very finicky sometimes but when it comes down to this stuff you're your biggest supporter so how do you feel about that well i don't bank on it i mm-hmm. have um I'm the youngest in the family, mm-hmm. so my sisters, they all look at me like, uh, you're the baby, I should be reading your books like that, what are you doing? I'm like, girl, I'm 50 years old, what do you think I've been doing for all my life? I'm not a virgin, I'm married. <laughs> What's going on with you? <laughs> but, <laughs> I have one sister that has purchased all of my books, and she supports me, she has my stuff on Facebook, and She's always, you know, interactive, calling me, when are you releasing this, and what are you going to do with that? So, shout out to my sister Sheba for that. Um, I have another sister that just started reading my books, Mm -hmm. and she's, so far, she loves them, so I'm like, okay, well, maybe she'll read more, and I'm happy, but she's always been supportive, she just hadn't read it. Yeah. You know. The other sisters, Mm. no, they're not doing it. (laughs) You know, when I first started writing, I was in my teens and I didn't let anybody and my mom she loves to read my dad supports anything I does you know my brother he's like eh, if it's not Harry Potter or whatever I'm not reading I'm like whatever forget you <laughs> so you know when I was writing my stories and everything I was like dad let me tell you about this he was like okay so I told him everything it was a romantic book of course he just looked at me and he just kept looking at me like how do you know about all that? But it wasn't nothing <laughs> vulgar yet, you know. I kept it to my age bracket and everything like that. He was like, what do you know about romance, huh? What you know about falling in love? I said, your daughter is very creative. And I watch a lot of romantic movies. <laughs> you, you know, he was like, he was like, that's, that's, he was like, that really had me very interested. He was like, are you done with it yet? I was like, I'm not even done with it yet. And they know if I'm in my room door closed that means please don't come in because I'm really engulfed in my writing and I train myself to be able to write a certain word count a day and you know certain things like I don't write fast at all but if I wanted to I can you know 
I take a lot of love and energy and I put that all into my books. So once I'm done, now that's the point where I can say I'm exhausted. You know, because I put all that great energy, sad energy, fighting energy, all that into my characters. So now I just want to sleep. I want to relax. I want to watch Netflix. But then the next day, I'm on my laptop again. My mom's like, I thought you, you know, you're taking your break because you finished your first book and you're in your hiding. You know, you're hiding from your readers and everything like that. I was like, I am, but I just got another idea for book two or another book. She was like, your mind just doesn't stop. It doesn't stop at all. Like right now, even doing this podcast, in the back of my mind, I'm thinking about my book right now. <laughs> like literally, I'm thinking about my book. Like I have so, all that good juice just ready to be put into more and more books. And somebody told me, they was like, oh, Shy, you don't want to burn yourself out. I'm like, I'm only 22. I've been like this since 15 with all these books. If it was time for me to burn out, it probably would have been happened because I do so, so much. Probably would have been, I probably would have been hit the... Just keep doing you. Exactly. They're going to keep coming. The more you use your brain, the more these ideas are going to come. Exactly. (laughs) Because... If you love to write, and you know, it's some authors who love to write, but they don't love to read. I still don't understand that, but I get it. You know, I've heard that from a few authors on my my podcast. They was like, I love to write, but I don't love to read. And I asked them, so do you love to read your books? They was like, yeah, I love to read my books after I'm done. Or some like, oh, I don't read my books at all. I just write it and that's it. I'm like, read it. I was like, I was like, wow, but I understand it because it's some people, authors, who after they read their work, they're so like a perfectionist that they may see little things within their book that's not wrong, but to them, they're like, oh, that could have been better. And they're not going to want to do what I do with my, my books, scrap it. But me, I'm not like that. Once I know my book is there, I can read my book over and over and over again because I love it so much. And I have a book that I've done that. I know my that book from front to back, middle, all parts. You know, if my mom asks me a quote, I can give her one because I've read it so many times. Because that's how I want my readers to feel about that book. Right. If, and I yeah. Read my books, I always read my books over. I'll pre-order them, and when they drop, they come in the mail. Yeah. And I'll be very first book right here on my desk this is the book that I always go to I I look at the book every day and that's my motivation because that was my very first book I put so much work into it and I can go back pick up that book and read it so many times now my mom she read that book and she just after she got done she came my room was like mind you I'm in college so yeah so (laughs) she came in and she was like this book she said this book is good but, and, you know, when a reader, they see some, she was like, I seen some stuff that, you know, you could have, like, changed up a little bit because that's how she is. But she was like, I love the book. I was like, you finished it? She's like, it took me a minute because she was like, you're my daughter, and I'm trying to, you know, get past that. But she said, I finished it. It took me a while, and it was good. But she said, I don't, she was like, I don't read those urban books anymore. She's into the, all the mystery and all all those books and I don't I don't blame her at all because she got me into loving books and stuff like that too so that's why I'm going into those genres as well but that book she said she said she did a really really great job with that and I was like if my mom loved it what other older women love this book you know (laughs) who who else did I you know and I'm young so if my mom and she's way way older than me loves this story then it's people her age that's saying the same thing no i didn't mean it like that you are gorgeous i once you said your age i didn't even i'm like wow and you have so much experience so you can put all that in your books all of that greatness i try I'm just messing with you. I'm not worried about my age. I'm glad I made it this far. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I w- 
would like to know what will be the next stage for you as an author? That's what I would like to know. Well, um, I am trying to perfect my craft, so I'm always learning. And I have a mentor that I, um, I bounce things off of all the time. She's very helpful. And my, my goal is to become like a USA Today bestselling author. Mm-hmm. So with my mentor, she is showing me how, the parts of the business and how to think of it as a business adventure instead of just the writing part. Because the writing part is in my head. It's in my soul. I can get that part. I just have to train myself on the business end. And in order to make my USA Today letters, I have to become more of a businesswoman. Mm-hmm. I love that. Now, those are inspiring words. I really love that. Because me, like I said, I have a lot of goals. And it's already been a lot of people who are like, oh, you need to be a mentor. I want you to be a mentor for this and that. I'm like, one day, one day when I'm a little bit more seasoned, I definitely will. Because people really think right now, I know so much and, you know, I can give all this knowledge I don't know it all just yet. I do. At some point in time, I will. And then that's when I will mentor and do all of that. But right now, mm -mm, I'm still being mentored myself. I just... You'll always be mentored. You'll never know everything. Yep. Even my my mentor has a mentor. And her mentor has a mentor. So you'll never know everything. So if someone is asking you, go for it. There's, There's people out there that don't know more or anything that you know. Mm-hmm. So you do have something to share. So yeah. don't say that you have to know everything. You'll never do that. <laughs> See, now that's the that's the perfectionist side of me. I can never, you know, I can never escape that. That's just that deep down person in me where I'm I'm de- I really not the type of person that wants to be the best at everything, but I just I'm so forgiving and I love to give everything all of me as you can see in some of my posts and how I'm giving off ideas and all the little other stuff and plus with this that's just the type of sweet person that I am so (laughs) um so at this time you get to tell everyone where you they can get your books if you have a website or anything like that light page where you give your authors sneak peeks or anything like that that's where you could tell all your social media and you get to give a shout out to the next author you want to hear on this show. So, okay, yeah. thank you. Now, I am self published, so my books are on Amazon. You can buy all of them there. Um, I also have a website which is lloren, l l o r e n dot wordpress dot com, and that is my personal website where you can get sneak peeks, um, behind the scenes pictures of me at events and um, all of my readers that are buying books and I try to have fun with that on my website Um, then you can follow me on my social media um, for Twitter and Instagram it's at Rebirth of Lisa and for Facebook it is L dot L-O-R-E-N writer and you said the next author I would like to hear on your podcast would be my mentor Sierra London she sounds amazing I would definitely she is amazing just by the name I love it <laughs> yeah I will definitely be in contact to get her on the show most definitely because that would be something that would be a great great show now when I say like Sierra, she is the brainchild of a series you may have run across on Facebook. Um, Messy Mandy presents the Lunchtime Chronicles. Mm-hmm. And the Lunchtime Chronicles are quick, hot, sto- short stories that you can read during your lunch break. And they're very, I say, um, sexy. And each one of the authors that have um, participated so far has made the number one bestseller list. 
for that genre, and they are doing it big. And I have been asked to join that group as well, and my book will come out in February. So, Sierra is doing her thing with that. And along with Sierra is Viola Turner, Olivia Gaines, and Rihanna Mallory. So, um, we're doing, like, big things coming up with that series, and I would love for you to have her on so you can talk to Bessie Mandy and talk about that. <laughs> Yes, that would be, now that would be a spicy show. That would be really, really amazing. I absolutely loved having you on the show. Can't wait for you to come out with your next novel so I can brag about that on your next podcast episode when I invite you back because I will definitely have you back. Um, Thank you. I love you guys. She definitely loves you. I am your host, Shy Soul, and this is your favorite new author, L. Lauren. Bye. Thanks, it's all.